Now we have our next speaker, Siddharth, who is having 10 years of experience, out of which eight years is into development and two years is into sales. Quite strange, right? I mean, this is like a very inspiring thing that after development, he has moved to sales. Apart from that, he is very good at cooking also. So make sure to catch him after the talk and take good recipes. He'll be happy to share with all of you. So when it comes to products, uh, performance is an important metric that we need to measure. So Siddhartha will talk about how observability and how all these metrics comes into play and how all this is es essentially contributes to a better UX of a product. So to dive deeper into the more insights into how observability and telemetry helps to shape a product itself, I invite Siddhartha to talk more about this topic. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I will be talking about observability and open telemetry today. So the idea behind this session is that by end of this talk, you will have an idea about how open telemetry is satisfying the need of observability. Who am I? So I'm Siddharth Khare. I'm working as a technical account manager with New Relic. And prior to joining New Relic, I was working with Citrix as a software developer. I like working on mobile applications, especially enterprise mobile apps. And uh, after moving to observability space, I'm more uh, inclined towards mobile application monitoring. This will be our agenda for today, where we will be discussing about what and why observability. We will be talking about open telemetry and uh, what are its co core concepts. Then we will deep dive into uh, industry adopters and the future of open telemetry. But before I start, I just want to ask one question to all of you. Like, what do you think how many tools any company uses to collect the telemetry data? So you can come up with any number. You can think about your metrics. You can think about traces. You can think about logs or any application stats which you think. You can come up with some number. What? OK, nice. Any other? So yes, so based upon the study, it has been found that we use somewhere around four to six tools for collecting any telemetry data. And why not just one tool? That's where observability comes into picture. So observability is all about how your systems are performing based upon the output which it generates, right? And I hope everyone is aware about this particular scenario where everything works fine in my dev environment, but as soon as I ship it to production, it starts failing. And that's where we call it as ops problem. Even in current scenarios, what is happening is I have seen people saying that it is working fine in my container. Maybe you are not deploying the container correctly. But again, that is not the case. And that shouldn't be the case. So that's where observability comes to rescue. And observability is helping each and every persona in your organization. So developers can figure out the fixes in their code, they can debug their code more efficiently. DevOps engineers can understand how their system health is depending upon the metrics which observability is generating for them. SRE will understand how reliable their systems are. And not just developers, DevOps, SREs. It also helps your product managers and product owners to understand how their end users are leveraging their applications so they can more make some more informed decisions while planning new features. Now, with this slide, I just want to show that observability is not only helping individual personas, it also helps you to run your businesses. Let's talk about open telemetry, what it is, uh, how it works, right? So I'll share some key facts about open telemetry. So I hope everyone is aware about open telemetry concept, right? And open telemetry is a incubating project in CNCF umbrella. It is formed by merging two products, two main projects. One is open tracing, another one is open census. And if you have leveraged 
Agar or Zipkin, you have already experienced the taste of open tracing. Third, open telemetry offers you a wide variety of APIs and libraries with which you are not dependent on specific vendor. Last but not the least, open telemetry is also setting up a standardized way of collecting the telemetry data from your application. You might find this on CNCF dev stats, where you see that open telemetry is the second most active project in CNCF. First is obviously Kubernetes. You can scan the QR code if you want to look at the report. This report keeps on changing. This is the trend hype cycle report for open tele observability and monitoring for 2022, where you see observability and distributed tracing at the peak, and open telemetry is just getting innovated. Now, same stat for 2023 shows that observability is diving towards maturity, and open telemetry is climbing up at the peak. In this journey, there is something new which gets introduced, that is observability-driven development. This is also called as ODD approach, where a lot of organizations are adopting and they are adopting observability at a very initial stage. Now, if it is that great, why everyone should not move to ODD? So if you are planning to move to ODD approach, you have to consider certain things. I have listed down three most important questions here. So before opting ODD, you should understand the basic difference between monitoring and observability. Because what happens is in traditional monitoring, it's all about up, down, red, green, but observability is a lot more than that. Second, do you have a basic understanding about metrics, logs, and traces? Because one of this will not gonna benefit you in running your business. And last, which is very important, is your environment able to adapt with this change? Because if you adopt ODD approach in the early stage, your, you will see uh, different, different changes which will keep on happening on daily basis. So you have to be mature enough to understand why this change is happening and are you ready to adapt this change. So with this, I'll move into some core concepts about open telemetry. So with open telemetry, it's all about annotation. Your data is annotated. What this means is it depends on implementer, how they are trying to annotate their data to make it more meaningful. And that's where open telemetry offers you a semantic conventions where you can represent a specific operation in your software. And there can be n number of operations which your software performs. Some of them might be HTTP calls, might be database operations, or might be any resource allocation. Second, API and SDKs are available in open telemetry for each and every language. So you will be able to gather your telemetry data from them. And all these APIs and SDKs offer automatic instrumentation. Last but not the least, uh, we have OTLP. OTLP is Open Telemetry Line Protocol. So this is the important piece because once you collect all this data, you need some protocol to export this data to your backends. So here you see two images. One on my left is automatic instrumentation and then we have a manual instrumentation. Obviously, with automatic instrumentation, you see less number of lines, but with manual instrumentation, there are more lines. So if you are a beginner with open telemetry and observability space, it is recommended to go with automatic instrumentation because you will be able to understand how your application is performing. Once you have a basic idea how your application is performing, what metrics you need, then you can go with manual instrumentation. That's where you can create your own spans, you can create your own custom data, you can create your own custom event. Now, once I have all this data, how it is helpful to me? 
So once you export this data, you will see, you will be able to dig deeper into your application stack with respect to building spans. Once you have those spans, you can again dig deeper and you can pinpoint the errors in your application. And if you are sending some custom attributes, so here you can see an example where the problem is happening and it was a pin code issue. And you will see the value of the pin code as well. That's how in depth you can go ahead with open telemetry. Now, this is another concept. We have talked about automatic instrumentation, manual instrumentation, the ways of collecting the data, what happens once the data is collected during that time. That's where collector comes into picture. So this collector has three components. One is your receiver, which means, which receives the data by a push or pull mechanism. Then it forwards the data to processor. That's where the core operation happens. Like if you need to sample your data, if you need to filter your data, what format of data you need, what type of enrichment you need for your data. At the end, it forwards it to exporters. Now, exporter, there are a lot of uh, supported platforms, a lot of supported frameworks which offer exporter functionality. You just need an endpoint. So if we are offering a lot of uh, exporters, then what will happen to our favorite tools like Prometheus and Grafana? So yes, Prometheus and Grafana also supports uh, endpoints for exporting the data but they are in an experimental phase. So before you go ahead with this, you can just look at the documentation and proceed. So the main aim of this particular slide is that till now we were discussing only about application stats. So collector and open telemetry is not just limited to your application stat. You can collect your infrastructure data. And this is one of the example from my application where I'm collecting my system level information. And once the data gets exported, this is how I can see the memory utilization. So this is another concept about open telemetry or tracing. So there are multiple ways how sampling happens for your spans. There are three main things. One is head-based sampling, tail-based sampling, and probabilistic sampling. So with head-based sampling, the decision whether to keep the trace or to discard the trace happens at a very early stage. So you might end up losing your, some important spans. However, that's not the case with tail-based sampling. With tail-based sampling, the decision whether to keep the span happens at the end, where it considers all the traces and all the spans in that traces. So this is one simple config file from my app where to use the tail-based sampling, you have to define it in the processor configuration. Now, the last one which I was talking about is probabilistic sampling. So probabilistic sampling is a sampling technique where you can define what percentage of samples you need. And this is very much recommended for somewhere who, someone who is starting their journey with application monitoring because you will get a basic idea about how your application spans look like, how your application stack is performing. Now, let's see how we can export the data. So I have three examples of how we can export the data. First one shows Zipkin and its endpoint to export the data. Second example on the bottom shows Prometheus endpoint to collect the data. And the third example which I'm using is for one of the observability platforms endpoint and I'm leveraging New Relic's endpoint to export the data. The catch here is all this data, whatever we are capturing is using open telemetry and you are use, we are using one or the other endpoint to export this data. So we have discussed about how you can instrument how you can uh, look at the data, but who are the adopters in industry? On this slide, you see a lot of big names, right? This is not just less. 
there are many other organizations leveraging open telemetry these are few who are leveraging it at a scale they are using they are not just a early adopters they are using it even as a production level production grade open telemetry with observability one such case study i want to share is about one very big customer and i hope everyone is aware about this name skyscanner right i think almost everyone so when skyscanner started adopting open telemetry they are seeing the significant results they could see and they could retire around 12 internal and external systems which they don't need once they adopted open telemetry and observability they have multiple build pipelines but the main difference which they have seen is in mobile build pipeline where they were able to save 15 minutes approximately 15 minutes on every merge request. and then with this they were able to set up unlimited slos to run their business again you can scan that uh, qr code if you want to read through the journey of sky scanner how they started adopting open telemetry and you can also apply in your organizations so we have discussed about implementation we have discussed about industry adopters what is the future of open telemetry this is the maturity level what open telemetry offers and this data i have pulled out on 16th of october it might change because it's daily there are a lot of contributions happening daily the data keeps on changing so if you keep a close tap on this you will be able to be more aware about which telemetry data and which language is supporting it perfectly for now trace is the only telemetry data which is supported and stable by most of the languages again qr code is there feel free to scan so who are the enablers and what are the integrations which are available for open telemetry again we see lot of big names here all the major cloud players in the market like aws azure gcp they are offering a support for open telemetry aws has their own distro for open telemetry you can use their lambdas to monitor their application stack which is running in aws microsoft azure offers open telemetry tracing for azure and new relic is a proud enabler and contributor for open telemetry and we are fully compatible with open otlp protocol lot of containers are natively supporting open telemetry i'll just recap of what we discussed so there is no doubt open telemetry is going growing at a rapid pace before you adopt open telemetry you have to be matured enough to understand each and every detail about it so if you are collecting some telemetry data you have to be very much sure why you need that data to under because you will end up ingesting more and more data and in turn it will incur a cost for your company then with open telemetry it's very easy to gather the data because it is setting up a standard of how you have to collect the data last so once you have the open telemetry you have observability in your business your business will run on data and not just opinion and that's why we say eject data and load eject opinions and load data so with this i hope it's helpful to you these are my credentials you can get connected we can discuss about open telemetry mobile apps and if you have any questions you can we can catch up later outside and we have a booth as well if you need a demo or if you need some swags just you can come and visit us thank you